morning. Today uh, we're interviewing Miss Michael Brown, a fantastic, intelligent ebony queen. She uh, is a graduate of McClatchy High School and South Carolina State University. Uh, she's a young entrepreneur and back in Sacramento doing fantastic things. So we want to talk to her about the importance of Black History Month and how she got so involved in making sure she communicates with the young black people and the older black people of Sacramento. Miss Brown, introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Michael Brown, and um, I am, like Mr. Withrow said, I graduated from C.K. McClatchy High School, went on to go to South Carolina State University. Um, I'm a Delta, um, and I'm definitely active in my community. All right. Now, uh, what made you choose South Carolina State? Oh, for many reasons. Um, one, I went on a black college tour, and I did visit South Carolina State, and I did enjoy the campus. I loved the business school, and I knew I was going to major in business. Um, I got a scholarship. That always helps. And I have an aunt who lives in South Carolina. So I have family, I had a scholarship, and they had my major. All right. Now, did your parents support this because so many parents in California don't want their kids out of California and don't really understand the importance of the black colleges. Oh yes, um, my entire family has went to black colleges so it was very much um, promoted and supported for me to go to a black college. Um, my sister went to Prairie View, my brother went to Hampton, my parents went to Dillard and Southern. So in my household it was nothing but a black college, it was just a matter of which one. So you had a great experience then. Yes, I would never change it for the world. There's so much you get at a historically black college that I do think people miss out on when they go to a non-black college. Okay, what about black history? Did they teach you some of that there or how did you get involved in that? Well, going to a historically black college is black history in the making, like you're living it. Um, you're around 4,000 at my school, 4,000 black students getting educated all at once and at the campus you create a community so really you're living a all-black community where you're going to college you're going you're working um, and there's history everywhere like I lived in Sojourner Truth Hall and it was 14 stories a girl dorm and you can't help but know who Sojourner Truth is when you live in Sojourner Truth Hall um, most of our campus buildings are named after black historians or people who are black activists who did something um, in the community. So history is everywhere. Fantastic. Now tell us a little about your business, Michael. Yes. So I went to South Carolina State and graduated with honors in marketing. And I started a marketing and branding company called BeYourBusiness.com. And my goal for my company is really to reach back into my community and develop businesses and professionals because I feel like that's one of the needs in our community. We want to start businesses, but we don't know how to do it effectively and efficiently. And some of us just print our names on a business card and try to open a door, and we don't have the accounting, we don't have the management, we don't have the marketing know-how, and so we fail. And then that failure trends into our generations and then people don't want to start businesses, or our community doesn't support our businesses because they're failed businesses or just not great at service. And so I want to help my community in developing those talents and those skill sets. All right, that sounds good. And I understand that you're doing something about black alumni too. Yes. So a lot of black um, people in my generation who went to historically black colleges are in Sacramento, but we're kind of all scattered. And so hopefully we can come together to do some of the work to promote um, the awareness of going to a black college, um, even the education on Greek life, like the sororities and fraternities, and just giving them a different perspective of what going to a black college is, because there's so many misconceptions about what a black college is, especially in California. Now, you talked about sororities and fraternities. When we see sororities and fraternities on TV, it's usually something negative. Mm -hmm. Could you tell me some positive things about sororities and fraternities? Well, I can definitely tell you positives about Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Um, I wanted to be a part of that sorority because one, it started with activism and community reach back. 
and I'm definitely all of those things. But what I think the positives of a sorority is, one, you are amongst a group of people who have a mission that is like-minded. And in numbers, we are able to do a lot of things. And so, for example, with Deltas, we have a scholarship we give every year. We have Delta Academy, where we mentor young black girls. Um, we're very much active in black college recruitment and making people aware of sending their kids to colleges. And we do a lot of community service. We definitely give back to our community. Tell me a little bit of the history of uh, Delta Sigma Phi. So we started in 1913, January 13, 1913. And it was started by 22 black women who um, wanted to be a part of the black women's suffrage movement. And with that being said, we wanted to hit the streets. We were very much in the cause and the movement of getting women equal rights and allowing them to work. And so Delta Sigma Theta was spawned at Howard University. And from there, we are a hundred and almost one year strong um, with being in our community and helping black women. So Howard University, and what city is that in? DC. Oh, okay, okay. I'm making sure you know your history. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Miss Michael Brown, tell me a little more about the legacy of your parents and your family with black colleges? Well, you know, when I was growing up, my dad made it very appealing to be a part of a black community. Um, he went to Dillard University and he is an Omega. And so with both of those incorporated, he definitely gave me the foundation to respect those sororities and the historically black colleges as a foundation in the black community and a part of the building blocks of your self-esteem. Um, I definitely had a lot of encouragement and support to give back to my community. And both my parents are very active in the community and giving back. And I also went to St. Paul Baptist Church, which also gave me a foundation for being a part of the black faith-based aspects of my growing up and my foundation of giving back. And I think it's so important that parents do give their kids that foundation because if you think it's just about you, you're gonna drown. I mean, it's really about a community and a village, and with everyone involved, you, you get the best out of yourself. I had great mentors like Mr. Withrow and many others that gave back to me and supported me in everything that I did. And I think our next generation needs a lot of that. Tell me about your United Black Student Union experience. That was fun because all of high school I was in Black Student Unions. And so to come back as an adult to be able to do a workshop or to give back to the students was inspiring for me because I know their faces and I know where they are and they have a whole future ahead of them but they may not know the direction or they need guidance. And so it was really nice to go back and not be that far removed from them to be able to give them some of those tools and tips. And I really love the work they're doing because it's so needed to have black student unions in high schools. Our children don't have a lot of groups they can come together that support their self-esteem and their identity and their history. And I feel like BSUs do that. All right. It sounds like you've had some real positive experiences within your family structure, your church structure, and your schools. Yes. But we hear so many negative things about schools. Mm -hmm. What made yours positive versus negative? Well, I would have to say... I think when I was coming up, I had a lot of community in my life. I think my parents were deliberate about that. So I had like Mr. Withrow, like you, and you were very hands-on with how you um, touched our lives in high school and the, the things that you exposed us to and made us aware of. And I just feel like some of that is missing in today's school systems um, for whatever reason, um, which is mostly important to how they see the world and how they develop their perspectives. And I just had great people around me that supported me and made sure I was exposed to the right things so that I could succeed. What about today's music? The exposure to today's music. Uh, I knew when I grew up, we had message music, you know, the Isley Brothers Harvest to the World, uh, Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes Wake Up Everybody, No More Sleeping in Bed. Mm. Uh, so, what in your era, did you have this type of music or has it changed? 
I think in my era, so I'm 1979, I'm dating myself. Um, the 80s were kind of interesting because we had crack hit the scene. So there was a lot of dysfunction, I think, coming up in our, our generation and our music related that. But we also had like MC Hammer, which was just fun, just fun music. Um, we had like Buster Rhymes and, you know, the BBD and those kinds of things. So I do see that it was changed from the 70s as far as message goes. But what I'm hearing now, I would have to say even at my age, it's like I would not want my kids, if I had any, to listen to it because I just don't see the benefit, you know. It's destructive more than um, inspiring or, I guess, fun music. It's really just promoting bad behavior. So music has definitely changed. And I do think it has affected our youth in a negative way, not a positive. So you're a young adult saying that these are the types of things that you see. So what can we do as a young African-American woman to make some changes to improve the uh, society as a whole? Well, one, definitely be a mentor. Uh, I mentor young girls. Just just them seeing me and me define what they think a black woman is, is a lot to their world. I have an education. I went away to school. I don't have any kids. I mean, those kinds of things. I don't know if they know too many black women who even fit that category. So they know it's possible. Um, another way to give back is to expose our youth to culture. Um, they need to know their history. They need to go to museums. They need to go to Alvin Ailey. Um, they need to see black art. They just have to be exposed to their culture and their community. And then lastly, I'm a Christian, so I would absolutely say there needs to be a foundation in God. Because when all else fails and it's really dark, that's the only thing that holds you up and gives you strength to go forward. Because life is not easy. And it never will be, especially if you're black. So you're going to need Jesus Christ. <laughs> Now, uh, we've gotten everything except men. So I'm going to ask you about men, <laughs> African-American young men. Okay. Uh, what do you expect and what should young ladies expect? And how do we develop it when we have so few men in the homes now, in the households to teach young people how to be men? Good young course. men how to be men. Well, this is going to be an interesting answer because I did have my father. Okay. Um, but what I am seeing when I mentor young girls and what I tell them is one, to have standards. And those standards need to be aligned in a healthy way. So, for example, know your value. If you don't know your value, then you can't express your value, which means a man is going to decide what your value is. And it could be trash. So you don't want to let him make that decision for you. Um, the second thing I would say is go within, have good self-esteem, love yourself, um, take care of yourself, and think about the things and the energy that you put around you and that you put out. If you're always talking negative about someone, that is negative energy you're putting out into the universe. And I just see that a lot with our young girls where they're catty, they're cliquish, um, they're bullying each other. I just, the, those kinds of um, character traits are just not going to attract you a positive man and I guess the other thing if you don't have your father in your home mothers please try to put a positive male role model in their lives whether it's their pastor um, a youth pastor um, a teacher a coach anyone they just need one well Miss Brown we're, we're going to wrap this up a little bit I want you to uh, give your website okay. and your uh email address so people can get in touch with you. Absolutely. Um, the name of my business is BeYourBusiness.com and that's www.BeYourBusiness.com and you can also email me at info at BeYourBusiness.com Alright, this is Miss Michael Brown, our first guest for 2014 and she's talking about things that African American Ebony Queens should look forward to doing and being and giving a little history on how to be successful, why to be successful, and things you should look for in a man. Miss.